Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and today we're cooking up smoked brisket and burn-ins from a beautiful Creekstone Farms prime brisket. So today we're gonna to be preparing a whole brisket, but we're gonna be smoking the point and flat muscles separately. Now, a lot of times when we're cooking brisket, we just cook it all together as one big piece of meat, simply because it's easier. But there are some advantages to separating out these two muscles that comprise the whole brisket and smoking them separately. So the flat muscle is where we get our slices out of. It's much more lean than the point muscle, which is where we get our burnt ends. And that means that they cook differently. That there's no getting around it. They're gonna cook in different amounts of time. So by separating them, we allow ourselves the opportunity to pull each one off the cooker exactly when it's perfectly done. And we're not waiting on one or the other to finish cooking. Now the other major advantage that you get out of separating these two muscles is that you essentially create twice as much surface area to add seasoning and that smoke flavor to your brisket. And as far as the cook goes, it really doesn't add any extra work. The work is done on the front end, which is in the trimming process. So let's jump right into that. So here's our whole brisket. We've essentially got this flat muscle that sits on the bottom here and the point muscle, which kind of wraps around the back end and over the top. We're gonna start by taking the fat off of the point muscle. We really don't need a fat cap up here on this fatty piece of meat. So that's where we're gonna jump off. We essentially just wanna go down far enough until we see the red of the meat underneath. We're not trying to take off any extra meat. We're just trying to get right there at the edge. And it's gonna have a pretty good fat cap on it. Now I've trimmed enough briskets to know that this point meat's essentially gonna end right about here. So that's kind of my imaginary line that I'm looking at right now. Each one of these briskets is shaped just a little bit differently but I can predict that it'll be in that area. So that's where we're going to stop taking fat off because we do want to leave some on top of that flat meat, which is a little bit more lean. And there we can actually see that line where the point meat sits on top of the fat in between the two muscles. So that's our target. A nice sharp boning knife makes this really a lot easier. Don't try and do this with a chef's knife. Uh, other types of knives, you know, you can get the job done. You're just going to make more work for yourself. The Wustoff's a really nice choice. I love the curved blade on their boning knife. This is my knife of choice. If you like a straight one, you can go that route. I'm just more comfortable with the curved boning knife. So now we've got most of that fat off the top of the point meat. To help us define just where we're gonna be making our separations, I'm just gonna do a little trimming on the sides now. So this front end of the flat, is just this really thin piece of meat and, and fat. We're gonna just trim that off, which is essentially gonna go right along the same lines as the muscle fibers. That works out nicely. Over here, we're just gonna get rid of this kind of graying edge this is a lot, allows us to see just where the separation of these two muscles happens. As we flip this around, you're gonna see this is really gray right here on the edge. And that happens just in the processing. So we're just gonna take that right off of there. Nice red meat exposed underneath of it. That's mostly fat anyways. And as we make this trim here, you're gonna start to see just where those two muscles are different. So there's this little line of fat that runs right in between the two of them. We'll trim this up a little bit more and we'll start to peel that point meat off the flat. So once we get down to that line, and now I know this is where the two are gonna separate, I'm just gonna make a little cut right here so I can get my fingers underneath the end of this very thin edge of the point muscle. And once you got a hold on that, you can just start making very small cuts to separate these two pieces of meat. Generally speaking, you know that if you're cutting into white, you're in the right spot. If you're cutting into red, you need to make an adjustment one way or the other.
And because this is a natural seam in between these muscles, it wants to come apart right here. So you just have to help it along by very gently slicing with your knife. Go down just a little bit further right there. And you're gonna see these thin strands that kind of go vertical here. That's what you wanna cut through to pull these things apart. I like to lift up on the point meat and just let gravity do the work. Short, gentle cuts and it falls away under its own weight. So now once you've gotten all the way to the back, the fat starts to get harder and you can kind of use the brisket as a guideline because the fat line is essentially going to run all the way through. You're going to be able to always see that. Let me just take this huge chunk off of here so that makes that a little bit easier. So you're just going to follow that fat line. Again, pulling on this helps because it is a natural seam. Like that last cut doesn't even need to be made because it pulled right apart. So now you've got your point muscle, you've got your flat muscle. We just need to trim up the outsides a little bit. We got some big hunks of hard fat we want to get rid of on our point here. A little bit of that same thing going on on the flat here. We're just going to trim this down so we have about a quarter inch of fat on the flat. We don't need any extra fat on the point. So a big old hunk of fat there on the edge of this flat meat, we're just going to take that straight off. So we're back here where the point and the flat muscles meet. We've got a little bit of that point left just right at the edge there, so we're going to take that off. And then the rest of this exposed fat on top of the flat meat, we just want to trim down, like I said, to about a quarter inch. All right, I feel pretty good about how this is looking. We've got a decent little fat cap left on the surface. We're not trimming this for a judge, we're trimming this for eating, so don't worry if it doesn't look perfectly pretty. On the opposite side, we've got just a little bit of fat here in a few spots. This isn't stuff that you have to take off. You're welcome to do it if you want to, but I'm not too worried about it. Again, we're just cooking this for eating. All right, so this is looking really nice now. The one thing I want you to notice is how flat most of this is, and it's kind of got this round hump on the end. So in order for this to cook evenly, we're gonna go ahead and just butterfly this out. So you wanna take your knife, press it flat and parallel to your cutting board, and you're just gonna start to slice back, peel this muscle over. Obviously, you don't wanna go all the way through. So cut slowly and intentionally until that folds out and it's all the same thickness. That's a good looking point. Now before we move on to the seasoning process, I just wanna show you these two muscles next to each other so you can understand just how much fat runs through the point and how lean this flat meat is. You'll also notice that this is about twice the thickness of the point. But because of the fat content in here, they're going to cook in roughly the same amount of time. So now we're going to move on to injecting and seasoning the brisket. But before we do that, let me just say, don't throw away all that scrap that you trimmed off the whole brisket because that's quality fat and little bits of meat that you can throw into your grind for burgers or sausage. It's good stuff. With that said, let's move on to building this injection. So for the base of our injection, we're using one cup of beef stock. And the idea here is to add extra moisture and seasoning to the inside of our leaner piece of meat. And to season this injection, we're gonna add a tablespoon of Plowboy's Bovine Bold. This is the same stuff you'll see on the surface of the brisket. We're also gonna add a tablespoon of Smoke on Wheels 
bootleg barbecue sauce. You'll see that on the brisket. Burn ends later. And then we're gonna add a little smoky spiciness with some Flay Volcano hot sauce. You can do as little or as much of this as you like. All right, so get it loaded up in our shaker here. Start to dissolve some of those ingredients in the bovine bowl, though you're still gonna get some of that texture and that's fine. It'll work its way through the injector. Now we're gonna wanna add some of this injection mixture to the wrap later on to pour right over the brisket inside the foil. So either pour some off now or mix up another batch. You're gonna want about a half cup. And we'll load that into our pistol grip injector, which is just my favorite tool for this job. It's the easiest to use. You get a good quantity out of it. And then we're gonna come to our brisket flat here. Opposite the fat cap side, we're gonna poke around a little bit, create a little pocket. And you can see as it inflates, it's taken on that injection, all that extra liquid and flavor. And I'm just gonna work here in a grid pattern back and forth, about every inch and a half, two inches. Just reloading the injector, picking up where we left off. And that way we make sure that we evenly distribute all of this injection and we cover the entirety of the flat. You also notice that we're coming in at kind of a 90 degree angle to the strands of meat. If you were to come in here with the strands of meat, you probably get some of that to stay but a lot of it's just gonna shoot right out. So that's why we're kind of coming in at an angle here. And who knows, maybe that's superstition, but that's the way I like to do it. Now I typically only will inject the flat because it's leaner than the point. The point's got a lot of fat. It really doesn't need any help. So at this point, we're gonna move on to seasoning. So sticking with our flat here, I'm just gonna make sure that we've got a little bit of moisture all over the surface of this to act as a binder. So our rub sticks really well to the surface. And we'll start by seasoning the fat cap side. We're gonna hit this with a couple different rubs today. We're gonna start off with our Plowboys Bovine Bold, which you saw in the injection. This is a little bit finer rub, but it's a fantastic beef and brisket rub. A little bit of sweetness to it, kind of a barbecue flavored profile. And I love this as a base. We'll put it down first because it's a little bit finer. But I want to add some extra texture to this thing. So we're going to go with our Cattleman's Grill Trail Dust, which is a little bit chunkier. You see, this is really going to add to that bark. And this is also a bit more savory rub. So we're kind of getting the best of both worlds here. A little bit of that barbecue sweetness and a lot of savory flavors. Garlic, salt, pepper, some herbs in there. And before we flip this over, let's just go ahead and hit the sides as well. Starting with that bovine. And then we'll hit it with our trail dust. And press that in there to make sure it sticks. So once I'm sure that that's all gonna stick to it, we can go ahead and flip this over. And we're gonna season this side second because this is the side that I want up, facing up when we get it into the grill. We're gonna put that fat cap down, give us a little thermal barrier from the heat. So we got that fine rub down first and then that little bit chunkier, more texture on top. Make sure you help that stick to the meat. And we're gonna move on to the point. All right, so essentially gonna do the same thing with the point. We're gonna use a little bit of that injection on the surface. And we'll give this the same treatment. Starting with our bovine.
and then our trail dust. All right, these are ready to go in the smoker. So today we're cooking on the Yoder Smokers YS640S pellet grill. We're running it at 250 degrees with hickory pellets. All right, so we're coming in here on the top shelf. You can cook these on the bottom just as well, but I like the top shelf because you've got plenty of distance from any radiant heat coming off your diffuser and lots of room for that smoke to circulate around the brisket. We'll throw some probes in aiming for the deepest part of each muscle here. This one's so even you could go just about anywhere. So we close up the grill, we let them smoke. We don't need to peek at them. We don't need to touch them for hours. They're probably gonna smoke for about six hours before they're ready to wrap in foil. Now, full transparency, we got here super early today. Put on some other briskets on a separate cooker and when we come back, that's what you're gonna be looking at. Well, our brisket's been on for about six and a half hours now. The temperatures are reading about 165 to 175 internal, which isn't super relevant at this point. What we're looking for is visually, we wanna see a really nice bark formed on the outside, and we're looking for a dark color all the way around. So we've got some great bark on the outside of our brisket here. We're seeing some fat pooling on the surface, which is also a really good sign. Same thing with our flat muscle over here. So we're ready to pull these off and wrap them in foil. All right, so we're gonna wrap each muscle separately here. And the only thing that we need to add at this point is that reserved liquid that we put together when we were injecting. So I'm gonna do about a quarter cup in each one of these, just to add that little bit of extra flavor. Remember, we've got that barbecue sauce in there. We've got a little bit of the seasoning that we used on the brisket. And also that optional hot sauce just to give it a nice little kick. I wanna wrap that up nice and tight. So as this brisket cooks down, it braises in its own juices as well as that liquid we've added. Give the point muscle just the same treatment. All right, so right back onto the cooker where they started out. I'm gonna get these probes in there so we can kind of monitor the temperature, I'm trying to find essentially the thickest part of each muscle. That's gonna be our best indicator. So we'll close this up and we'll let these finish out cooking. Uh, we're looking for a finishing internal temperature around 205 degrees, but really it's gonna be about probe tenderness, so we'll get there in a few hours. Well, we're about eight hours into this cook and our briskets are moving right along. They've crossed that 205 degree threshold, so we wanna probe these now and check for tenderness. All right, let's open up this flat here. Mm. Yeah, it smells incredible. So we're just gonna go kind of against the grain here, poking around. There's not a lot of resistance there, which is what we're looking for. I'd say especially with a nice rest, this thing's ready to pull off. Check the point now. Yeah. Oh, it's like butter. That's what we're going for. All right, so this is ready to come off as well. We'll give it a little rest and then cube it up for burn-ins. Now we get a lot of questions about resting your brisket. So generally what I do here is I'm gonna leave them wrapped in the foil. I'm just gonna let them rest and sit out at room temperature, probably for an hour or so. I mean, they can hold their heat that long. It's not like you're gonna be slicing in to cold brisket. The idea here though, is for all of the juices to redistribute throughout this piece of meat. Because essentially what happens when you 
put something over a heat source, a piece of meat, all those juices want to run to the center. And they need some time to kind of relax. That way you get the same juicy bite out of the edge of the brisket as you do in the dead center. Now you don't have to go a full hour. 30 minutes will be plenty of time for us to let our point rest before we cube it up. We're gonna toss it in some sauce and get it back on the grill to really tack up that sauce for the burnt ends. If you need to rest this for even longer but you don't wanna worry about losing your heat, just wrap that foil in a towel, throw it into a cooler, and it's gonna hold its heat for hours. All right, the point meat is rested. So we're gonna get this cubed and sauced so we can finish it up on the grill. I'm just gonna take my brisket slicer here. We're gonna cut these into bite-sized cubes. Well, let's take a look at it. Oh, we got it here. Beautiful smoke ring, nice moisture. You can see that that fat is broken down quite a bit, but it's still holding together so this doesn't just shred. And that's kind of the texture that you want to go for. All right, now to finish this off, we're just going to put it back into the foil. We're going to leave it open for this end portion here. You want to get, get it run through those juices, as well as hitting this with a little bit of sauce that's gonna tack up when we put this back onto the grill. And for the sauce, we're gonna be using the same stuff that we put into our injection earlier, the Smoke on Wheels, Kansas City bootleg. We're not gonna douse it, just enough to really give a little coating on the surface. And we'll throw this back on the grill just to let that sauce kinda tack up on the surface. The burn-ins are finishing up on the grill, so let's go ahead and slice into the flat and then we'll pull the burn-ins off. All right, pull this thing out of the foil. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna look for the strands of meat and which direction those muscles are running in. So that's this direction, which means we wanna cut opposite of that. All right. All right, let's check this out. Ooh, baby, that's a sweet little dangle. Give it the tug test, pops right apart. Great texture to it still, plenty tender. Ooh. Juicy, delicious. That's what we're looking for. All right, how about we go check on the burn ends? All right, these are looking good, got that sauce tacked up on the outside. Nice little squeeze to them. Let's have a taste. Oh yeah. That texture's right in that sweet spot where it's not falling apart, still holds together, but very little resistance. When you bite into it, it just sort of melts away. And the flavor's fantastic. Getting nice smokiness out of it. It's got a balance of salty and sweet because of that sauce. And that's pretty much what you're looking for with burn ends. Well, we've explored a lot of different ways to cook a brisket and when it comes right down to it, it's all about personal preference and what's important to you. For me, at the top of my list of priorities is a juicy brisket. And I found that the best way to get that is by wrapping it in foil. The added bonus of separating the point in the flat is that you have that much more control over the cook it doesn't take as long and you've got all that extra surface area for the seasoning and for the smoke. And that's not to say that I'm gonna do it this way every time because honestly, it's kinda of nice to have the simplicity of just throwing a whole brisket on and waiting it out. But for me, I think the effort that you put into this technique definitely pays off in the end. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all the products featured in today's video. If you enjoy the recipe, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.